Hey, Eric Schonsberg. I'm the Libertarian candidate for Congress. And uh, when you think Libertarian, you think, hopefully, much smaller government, especially at the federal level. And that means uh, much less spending and much less taxing. Let's talk about taxes for a second. Uh, taxes are, of course, horribly annoying. I mean, you can start with the obvious one, the one that everyone talks about, April 15th, IRS, income taxes. And I'm a, I'd love to cut those, uh, move it to a, a flat tax, get rid of the whole thing altogether, move to a fair tax. I'm open to either of those options. Uh, the income tax is uh, horribly painful, uh, and we all know that. Let's talk about a tax that actually causes more damage, though, to 80% of wage earners, and that's payroll or FICA taxes to support Social Security and Medicare. 15.3% of every dollar you earn up to about $100,000. No deductions, no exemptions. This tax pounds the working poor and the middle class. If you're a family of four, you don't start paying income taxes till about $43,000 of income. But by that, by that time, you've paid over, you've lost over $6,000 to payroll taxes. Uh, even if you're at the poverty line, again, you pay nothing to Uncle Sam on April 15th or the rest of the year in terms of income taxes, but you're going to lose over $3,000 to payroll taxes. So that's my first priority, is to deal with payroll taxes. They're an oppressive burden on the working poor and the middle class. Uh, we'll talk uh, in other links about the minimum wage and those sorts of policies, but if you want to help the poor, the first best thing you can do is quit taking their money when they're trying to work hard and make a living. Uh, there's all kinds of other taxes we could talk about. I know that's uh, for another time. Let's talk about the flip side of taxes, which is spending. And a lot of times, uh, the Republicans, for example, like to cut taxes a bit, and I appreciate that. But if you don't cut spending as well, then that's called deficit and debt, which means more future taxes. So they've had the courage to cut taxes. They haven't had the courage to cut spending, and so they have, therefore, the courage to pass that burden on to our children and grandchildren. They're just ringing it up on a credit card. So we've got all this spending. And, uh, and the Republicans have supported lower taxes, and again, that's fine, that's great. But without reductions in spending, it ends up just shifting the burden to the future, and it devalues the dollar, which increases the price of gas and other problems like that. So we've got to cut spending. A lot of ways to go at it. The Republicans and Democrats used to talk about government waste a lot, and that's fine, uh, but that's, uh, that's easy stuff, right? Or pork. Uh, the, the new ter term for it is earmarks. And yeah, of course we should get rid of all that, but that's like the icing on a, a very big cake. And that's almost an easy way out for the Democrats and Republicans. There has to be much more significant approach to cutting spending, and, and we need to do that. Part of that, the biggest part of that, uh, a small part of that rather, is cutting subsidies. So for example, uh, there's no reason to subsidize any corporation. We shouldn't subsidize Planned Parenthood. We shouldn't send any money to energy companies. Uh, it's just not not good. Why am I taking your money? Why would I ever vote to take your money to give to any company? It's simply unacceptable. Uh, subsidies in farm uh, and energy have been famous in the last few years, subsidizing ethanol, which is neither uh, energy nor economically efficient. Uh, a lot of money has gone that way. It's made food more expensive. It's caused starvation in less developed countries, or at least less food, more expensive food. It's simply unacceptable policy. The government should not be in the business of moving money around, subsidizing this, that, and the other. Let the market work and quit helping out special interest groups to the, uh, to, uh, while hurting uh, working poor and even people in other countries. A far larger issue, though, is uh, the, the issue of what's called federalism. And that's that all sorts of things are being done in Washington that should not be done at all, or if they're going to be done, should be done at the state and local level. A lot of times we take state and local problems and we say to Washington, can you help us with this? And it's very tempting for a politician to say, absolutely. And what do we do? Well, we send them our money, and then they attach some strings to it. They send the money back to it. They take some of the money. They send some of the money back to us. And then they say, hey, fix your problem. OK, well, thanks. Uh, that didn't really help things very much. We have less money to do it. We have more regulations. That's just a dumb way to do policy. The smart way to do it is to take care of local and state problems with local and state solutions not to send things off to the federal government. So it's tempting to look to the federal government to solve all of our problems, but it's ridiculous, and it's inefficient, and it's spending a lot of money. There's all sorts of things that, regardless of the merits of, of, of it, whether it's health care or education or this, that, and the other, it's not a federal thing. Don't send that task and your money to Washington. Let's take care of things at the local and the state level. The federal government must be shrunk We've got to quit spending this kind of money, and the easiest way to do that, the, 
that to slash the size of the federal government is to take things that don't belong to the federal government constitutionally, ethically, efficiently, uh, in, in any of those terms, and give them back to the state and locals to deal with them as they wish. Uh, my name is Eric Schonsberg. I'm the Libertarian candidate for Congress. I'd appreciate your support on November 4th. And uh, there's more information on the website, ericforcongress.com. Don't waste your vote this time. Vote Schonsberg for Congress November 4th.